Good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful September crisp bluebird day here in the Adirondack High Peaks. I'm Jonathan Zaharik, and today we are going to go and do Street and Nye. Now, for the record, it is 10.37 a.m. on a Monday morning, and there's plenty of parking. So if you're shocked that I have parking here and I didn't have to park two miles up the road, well, it's a Monday. But essentially, many of you know that I have taken down many of my videos uh, who are only available to members now. And those are my older videos. And today will be the recreation of Street and I, so we have an updated video of what the trails are like today and going over exactly what Street and I looks like. But before we get started, and before I introduce the rest of the video, let's go over what I have in my backpack today. Some of you might be familiar with the 10 Essentials, but chances are if you're watching this video and seeing me for the first time, you're curious as to what Street and I might entail. So let's go over. First and foremost, I am carrying a 26 liter Hike Light Osprey pack. I've carried this thing up probably over 150 to 200 different high peaks. And uh, it's stayed with me all the way to the very end and it's incredible quality. And I do love Osprey. That is my preferred brand. I have a one and a half liter bladder here for water. Sometimes you can put Tailwind or other electrolyte substances, but today I'm just doing straight water with one and a half liters. I also recommend the bladder, particularly because it's much easier and accessible. So some of the essentials that I'm bringing today are, of course, a map. And again, this is what I recommend everyone else bring as well, especially if you don't know this place and this is your first time coming here. So we have a map, a lightweight med kit. I have a baggie here with some toilet paper and an extra pair of wool socks. I have my calories today, which are muffins, Sour Patch Kid, watermelons, and Pop-Tarts. And of course, I also have a headlamp, which even if your hike is only an hour or two hours long, you never know why you might need it. Whether you start in the day and plan on ending in the daytime, always bring a headlamp and either A, a backup headlamp or backup batteries. So with that being said, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Jonathan Zaharik. I'm a professional photographer and guide here in the Adirondack High Peaks. And today, like I said, we are doing Street and Nye. Street and Nye is roughly around 10 miles or so and is definitely considered one of the easier high peaks. It is not a marked trail, which means it's technically a herd path, but let's all be honest, there's not really a herd path here in the Adirondacks. They're all pretty much just trails. Street and Nye does not require some insane navigational skills, but there are definitely some things to have noted down that if you've never done this hike before I totally recommend you remember specific things in this video that I will allude to later on I just want to first and say thank you so much to my members I've been a little slow to getting this whole membership thing rolling on um, but as many of you know now there's plenty of incredible benefits that come with being a member of my channel so make sure you go check out all those insane awesome benefits that also support me and money goes back into the park here I also got the awesome merch line guys thank you so much for those who have Popped some incredible exclusive merch that's also you guys can see everything in the link in the bio I got so many kind words regarding my uh, record attempt hike this last Monday doing 25 peaks 25 high peaks in one day 24 hours I got 24 high peaks in 24 hours and got the 25th high peak before the 25th hour rolled over um, so I did get 25 high peaks in a day which to my knowledge is the biggest Adirondack day hike in recorded history that anyone has done in a single day um, car to car was 27 hours and 37 minutes and uh, I will have a episode coming out from James Appleton the 46 of 46 podcast regarding that so look out for that again there's a lot of videos that I did take off of my YouTube channel because I want to go in and recreate these videos so they're updated me updated equipment and basically all of that stuff so you guys are here to see a hike and it's gonna be pretty simple pretty straightforward nothing epic or crazy today so let's just go have some beautiful alone time in the high peaks wilderness one of the other reasons why I am doing Street Night today 
other than this video is the fact that I'm working on my grid 46, which is hiking all 46 in every month of the year, and I'm about to wrap up September. I just have four little hikes left, and I might make another video regarding one of those mountains as well. Um, but like I said earlier, we are at the Adirondack Lodge, and that is where Street and I starts. There's not really any other access point to it. And so when you look on the map, generally right where the toll booth is, right behind me, is pretty much a short parking spot that indicates Mount Joe, Rocky Falls, Indian Pass, and the Heart Lake Loop, which is where Street and I generally starts, as if you're going to hike to Indian Pass. Now, I've done Street and I, I want to say almost 10 times, um, and I haven't done it just casually for fun and then just enjoying the walk in a while. And honestly, that's what this place is about sometimes, you know? I'm also not using trekking poles today because I snapped one of my main pairs on my big hike last Monday. Um, but yeah, guys, I have some super exciting video content coming for the uh, for this fall. Some stuff that I've never done before. Um, not even vlog stuff, like pretty crazy things. And there's a lot of new revelations in my life. And so I'm really excited to see where this channel goes with the new equipment and everything. So like I said, this is going to be pretty much just static shots, calming music, hiking street and I, and occasionally I'll uh, talk about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And if we come out here to gorgeous Heart Lake, as you can see the foliage is starting to turn, we have Street Mountain poking up right there. And man, the water is so clear today. So beautiful. So my Street and I video that I removed was one of my very first vlogs I ever put out back in June of 2017. And uh, I get a lot of quotes from that one, you know, kind of regarding Wolf Spider Bridge and the Spider Web Remover 3000 and the fact that I thought the hike was awful and that it didn't bring enough water with me. But today's not that case. I think Street and I was also my like ninth and 10th high peaks that I ever did. So on this, uh, today will be my 366th and 367th. The reason why signing in is important is because it allows the DEC to know trail usage. And of course, for safety concerns, if for some reason they have to come look for your dead body, it is important that they can confirm what trailhead you signed in as. So remember that signing in, you're not only helping yourself, but you are also helping the park. All those trails that you complained about that, you know, the DEC could easily be going in and fixing, you know, the more people they see that hike it, the more, the more likely they'll consider it. <laughs> Shortly after sign in, this is the first noteworthy mentionable spot. If you're not looking careful and you're looking down at your feet, you will miss this sign. This is about three minutes after the sign in, and it is the sign that pretty much points right to Street and I, or left to Indian Pass. And well, you don't want to go left, you want to go right. Be careful not to miss the sign because it's very important, and a lot of people actually miss it. And in about one mile or 20 to 30 minutes or so down this trail, we will eventually get to the next obstacle, which is the Indian Pass Brook River Crossing. Something you also might want to consider bringing upon your hikes is investing into a water filtration system. After hiking for 22 minutes, from the sign in, we have reached Indian Pass Brook. Now this is the part that you need to realize. Once you get here to the water, it looks like the trail continues left and there's a way to cross immediately right when you get to the water. However, this is not the case. There was a lot of debris earlier here in the year and there's definitely a chance for debris to be here later on in time. So just remember right when you get to the water for the first time, just stay to the right of the water. You should follow the water for at least five minutes before you get to the place to cross. Now the water levels are looking very low today, which are which is great. Generally, Indian Pass Brook is frequently impassable if there's been a heavy amount of rain within a couple days prior. Keep that in mind. If there's been a lot of rain, keep tabs on if people have been able to get across or not, because sometimes you'll be wading through the water, and sometimes if it's a lot of rain, you won't even be able to get across. People have needed to get rescued before because they crossed the brook 
went and did street and I, and then when they came back, the water levels were too high. And uh, they had to spend the night on the other side of the river before the DEC could actually get to them. And after a few minutes, you should get to the spot where the water crosses, and you will see a beautiful cairn. You'll know you're in the right spot if you see this cairn. And like I said, the water levels are super low. Generally, the water actually even comes up to these rocks here, and it's just, it's not today, so I lucked out. So there's cairn, there's a cairn here, and there's two cairns as well on the other side, but the trail should just reconnect perfectly on the other side if you crossed at the right spot. Once we cross the river, just keep taking the trail. You'll come out to this little meadow here, and then you continue. Now naturally, since I've accustomed myself to ultra trail running over the last year or so, it is very hard to be walking this trail right now. So I'm doing it for you guys. I'm doing it for you. But we are now coming up to Wolf Spider Bridge. Many of you might remember this. Yeah, well, that is still something you cross today. Every time, every time. Now checking. No wolf spiders today. Eventually you will come to a drainage and just like on Marshall, there will be multiple indications that you have to cross the river. So make sure you're always looking for the trail on the other side if you lose it and follow the cairns. Generally, they always steer you in the right direction. Approximately where the first drainage crossing was just a second ago is when you pretty much hit the base of the mountain and that's when you start going uphill, as you can clearly see now. Man, I really wish going uphill affected my lungs. Bummer, man. I miss the days being out of shape. Now, we're at a pretty steep second here of the trail, right? I'm gonna take a second here to show you a little bit of the trail running world and give you a little bit of like taste of what it looks like to run up one of these things and down one of these things. Now I am not wearing the appropriate shoes, so hopefully I won't eat dirt. Yeah, look, uh, I'm like who this? Why y'all tripping off who this? Why y'all looking so clueless? Why you acting like I don't do this? Hold up, mm, you say you beast mode. I think I'ma need a little proof then. I feel like I probably take two of them. Somebody might leave two flips. Hold up. And there you have it. So, all right, let's keep going. After around 3,000 feet, the trees will change to generally just all pine and evergreen. Most maples will disappear and birch trees will still remain. And now we come out to our first view spot. Gorgeous. We have the McIntyre range right there with the great range and tabletop and Phelps in the distance. Beautiful. Once you enter the blowdown section, you are only minutes from the intersection. So after coming up 10 minutes past the blowdown section, you'll be met with the street and nigh intersection. And there's some fellow hikers. Hey guys. And they do follow my work apparently. Guess. 
Now, the street and I used to be indicated right here on this tree what direction to go, but clearly it's been mutilated over the years. But now we have this little cairn, which is obviously not visible in the wintertime. Similar to these guys, I'm probably gonna eat a little bit before I go and send off to these other two peaks. Nye is to my, my, my left currently, but at the intersection it's, it's to the right. And uh, it's only like five to 10 minutes to get the Nye and then to street, which is to the left, can take anywhere between maybe 20 to 30 minutes about. All the way from the very start of the hike, obviously depending on your physical ability, it could, you know, it could be as fast as an hour and a half to get to this point. For most hikers, it'll probably take an average of about two hours. Generally, I always do street first when coming up here. Pretty much in any high peak hike, I generally say do the hardest first. It really just makes the rest of the hike that much better. It's about half a mile to street, turning left at the intersection, and upon a few minutes down the trail, you can see the summit in the distance. Right up there. So. And after a solid 15 to 20 minute push from the intersection, we are at the summit of Street Mountain. Now, Street Mountain has around four different lookouts, and I'm going to show you two ones to take note. Looking out to the east, we see the Sawtooths right here with the Seward Range. Heading over to the Santanoni Range with McNaughton right here. And this right here, that's Lost Pond Peak. Both part of the ADK 100 highest. Then in the back, we continue to see Mount Marshall. And then the McIntyre Range, Iroquois, Boundary, and Algonquin. So I've been going super casual all day, obviously stopping to record some videos not going really crazy and I'm two hours and 45 minutes in elapsed. Obviously I can't speak for everyone on their own speed but the intersection should take the average steady paced hiker two hours to get to and around 20 minutes up the street. Of course some people will be slower and some people might be quicker. So we're going to descend now back to the intersection and descend nigh. And just like that we are back at the intersection. So when you get to the intersection street, once you're back, Nye is obviously the other way to the right. And generally I found the average time to Nye only around seven minutes. It's not long at all. In fact, Nye is under 4,000 feet and shouldn't even be considered a high peak. Even if it was at 4,000 feet, it still doesn't even meet the requirements, but we do it anyways. Just like that, here we are, Nye Mountain. I was a little off on my summit counter. This is high peak 364. Well, there's no view on the summit of Nye. However, there is a fantastic view spot just about 60 seconds before the summit. Be careful not to miss it. Shoot to the right and here we are. see Street Mountain way back there. Back to the McIntyre Range, Marcy poking up, the Great Range, and Big Slide. So now we just descend back to the intersection and back to the car. And here we are. Now guys, I don't want to bore you with the hike out. It's the same as it was coming in. 
so there's only one thing left to do. And that's to teleport back to the car. So, I'll see you then. And we're back. Four hours and 45 minutes. Very casual pace. Didn't even eat too much. Street nine, beautiful hike. Definitely would recommend it. Views aren't the best, but it's a good way to get out there and enjoy these mountains. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I sometimes feel like the Bob Ross of hiking videos, I guess. But sometimes simple is what we need, you know? Got a lot of photographic things coming up here in the next few weeks. And as always, a lot of things I'm excited to share with you guys. So make sure you're following my Instagram to see what I'm doing daily in the mountains. I might go hike Phelps here in a second. But uh, that's a wrap. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'm Jonathan Zaharik, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.